there, welcome to Stamp Along with Rubber Necker. This is pretty, and today we're going to make a shaker um, shadow box. And you can see how beautiful this little shadow box is, and there's a little shaker element in the front of it. Before I start, I wanted to just show you how beautiful it looks outside. As I was recording this video, it was snowing heavily, and that's pretty much what inspired this little project. So to start off this project I'm starting with three pieces of cardstock. One is cut at six and a quarter by five and a half and two pieces are cut at five and a half by five and a quarter. So each of these are going to score differently. So six and a quarter, the, the, the cardstock which is six and a quarter by five and a half, that is the largest of the cardstock, I'm going to score at one inch on both sides. So that's one inch on the left and the one inch on the right side. And I'm just putting the sticker back so you know what each of those cardstock is. Now I'm taking the smaller of the cardstock and this is five and a quarter by five and a half. And on the five and a quarter side, I'm going to score at half an inch on both sides. So half an inch on the left side and half an inch on the right side. And I'm going to repeat that again when the, on the second piece of cardstock. Remember the second piece is also exactly the same measurement which is five and a half by five and a quarter and I'm scoring on the five and a quarter side half an inch on both sides. And that's pretty much all the scoring and cutting. So now we're going to start working on uh, designing these uh, panels. So the last panel, the final, so there is a front panel, a middle panel and the last panel and I've set them number as one, two, three. So this is the third one. I'm just scoring both sides really well and I'm going to start creating the pattern or the design for this last panel. So this is going to be the back or the final panel of your shadow box. Uh, I'm just uh, adding some tape and covering up that scored edge so that I don't get ink on it. But when I think about it in Einstein, not Einstein, <laughs> on hindsight, I didn't have to do that. I could have just blended the entire cardstock, but that's okay. So I've taken a copy paper, copy paper here and I am creating two snow banks. Uh, so just a freehand drawn snow bag, banks uh, in varied the reason I did two is because I wanted two different snow banks uh, with different variation uh, and heights. And I'm just taking this um, a Distress ink and I think this is called Evergreen Bow or something. It's a very light bluish uh, green and I'm just going to blend it over that little mask that I created or stencil that I created with a copy paper just to create the snow banks on that white panel or the last panel of the of the shadow box. I'm just very very light handedly blending it and now you can see the two banks that we have created uh, to show that there is um, snow uh, in different you know at, on different levels and heights. And then I'm taking this um, grayish colored distress oxide ink. This is called hickory smoke and I'm just using a sm very small rounded a blending pen and I'm not pen a blending brush and I'm just adding um, I'm just kind of dabbing it to create bushes and trees at a distance so there's really nothing here I'm just kind of adding and dabbing the ink uh, creating a form that probably looks like a tree or a bush when you're looking from a distance. It really doesn't matter how you do it, you just need to add it there because once we start adding more layers to it, it's not even going to be as visible but it will be there just to add that slight texture like it's it's a snowy day, it's full of mist and you can see these trees at a distance. So once I'm done adding those bushes and the shadows where I wanted on the snow banks, I'm going to take that, uh, that aqua colored distress ink and I'm just going to blend it on the top, heavily on the top and very lightly at the bottom. So I'm really laying a heavy hand on the top but staying very light at the bottom because usually when there's uh, snow on the ground the snow looks much lighter even in the dark nights it's 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 still the snow looks pretty white doesn't look dark at all it has a little bit of shadow and there's a reason I'm kind of laying a lot more color on the top versus at the bottom 
And then I'm also adding some hickory smoke and I am going to add some black soot and I'm just going to, what, what I, the reason I'm adding these darker colors on the aqua shade is to kind of give it more deeper or the darker look, like a night look, but also the beautiful blue skies underneath it too. So just to create more variation in that dark color. Then I'm taking this pine tree stamp set and I am going to start adding these trees in my background. And I'm using uh, the same gray hickory smoke ink because again, I don't want these trees to look very obvious. I want them to look like they are in a distance and also that the fog and the mist and the snow is uh, kind of creating the visual visual to be quite hazy so I'm just using it multiple times create and I've just taken two different sizes of the tree and I'm stamping it all over the just on the top half of my um, cardstock and then I'm just using some water and I'm going to just uh, flick it on this and just kind of lift it up and that'll create a little bit of texture onto that blended uh, paper and then I'm going to just peel off and you can see because I added that it kept that white edges uh, pretty clean um, I'm going to lay a sentiment and the sentiment is from the Chris Merry Christmas sentiment set and it just says Merry Christmas and I'm going to add that sentiment uh, on the top part where I blended using white embossing powder. Now I did make sure that the, that the surface is completely dry before I did this uh, stamping because Distress Oxide ink tends to stay wet a bit, so if you did not dry it, your embossing powder will stick all over the place. So I did dry it before I did that. And once I was done embossing, I took this white gel pen and just laid dots in different sizes just to add more to that snowy, wintry night feel. And then I took this liquid glue here and I just dabbed it all over the surface everywhere, just added a few drops of uh, dabs of liquid glue. And then I got this, um, a pie, uh, I have a little uh, pail of, um, I think this is called snow shards or something like that. And I'm just going to lay it over the places where I laid the glue. And I'm just going to press that in and let it stick. And that's going to give a lot of texture um, onto this cardstock. And because this is a shadow box, it actually all of these textures and layers adds to the effect of that shadow box. And that completed the last panel. Now we're going to work on the middle panel, which is exactly the same size, which was cut and scored exactly like the first one and I'm just laying it there just to see where I want to cut it where do I want to create a bank so what I'm going to do is I'm going to freehand draw another bank from one end to the other so you're going even over the score line so you're just going to go from one end to the other end and I just freehand drew the bank um, and I just uh, cut that using my scissor and I'm going to add some uh, ink again onto this piece as well um, and again I want to make sure that I'm protecting the side so I'm just adding some masking paper and then I'm just going to take that same evergreen bow ink and I'm just going to very lightly blend it on top of the the bank as well a little bit at the bottom and then when I'm done with that I'm going to add some glue to it and add some more of that little snowy um, flakes and I just wanted to add on this so as if there's no accumulated uh, and then the the light is hitting on it and it's glistening that's the idea so I'm just on the left side of this panel you're going to fold it upwards so on the left you're going to fold it upwards and on the right you're going to fold it backwards so it's it's can you, I hope you can see that and then I'm going to cut off a sliver from both these edges, both these code edges. And I'm going to repeat that uh, uh, cutting off that sliver even on that back panel. And that make, that'll make it easier for you to glue and align once, the, once you start putting the box together. And it's a really tiny, tiny sliver. So you can see how that panel is going to go right over it and all the different layers of banks and things like that. Now we're going to work on the shaker part of the of the shadow box and this is the first or the front panel which is cut at six and a quarter by five and a half. I've already gone ahead and ink blended and did exactly the same thing. I left the center portion 
white I didn't really ink there and you will see why and I'm doing exactly the same thing I added the water I added the white ink pen and now I'm doing that little um, snowy texture using my glue pen and I'm using a very heavy glue on the top part because I want the snow to be really thick on the top part of this um, of the shadow box and I'm just going on the sides you can see I'm not really coming a whole lot in the center and now I'm going to take this die and this is called tree in an oval I think that's what it's called I'll, I have it in the description box below the name of this die and I'm going to cut it right in the center so you can see it really didn't matter for you to color the center part because you will be cutting it and you, and I went and I cut this through my die cutting machine and I'm slowly uh, peeling it off the the cardstock and then once I remove it once I can get it off this die and you can see how beautifully it has cut I'm just going to remove that uh, positive is it the positive uh, part which I don't really need for this um, for this particular card and I'm, and that's how it's going to look and it's going to fit into that oval perfectly and now to build the shaker element I'm taking this acetate and I'm going to put it behind this oval um, shape and I'm just adding some score tape behind it so that I can glue that die cut oval tree onto the acetate the acetate is a little larger than the oval so now after I'm done tearing it to the acetate I'm just going to take my uh, scissor and I'm just going to cut the edges off and you can see that is pretty much done now I need to add acetate behind this front panel as well uh, so that I can adhere that oval on it and you will see as we progress so I'm just going to adhere, add some glue uh, just some liquid glue to the back of this panel and I'm going to adhere this acetate onto the back of the uh, front panel and now you can see I can easily adhere this on top of that um, acetate so it gives me a place to glue on to it and now to create the well I'm going to add some foam adhesive this is a really thin foam adhesive that goes right behind like where the oval is and I'm just going to lay it around the so it's in so it's hidden behind that cardstock and I'm going to fill in this um, base or that cuts or that acetate window with some sequins and even that little snowflakes and also a little bit of uh, glitter so I'm just going to add I'm not adding a whole lot um, because the well is not extremely deep the foam that I'm using is not a very thick foam uh, it's quite a thin foam so I don't really need I want to add a lot that you won't be able to move your shaker elements and then I'm just making sure that the edges of uh, that oval is absolutely clean so it's easy for me to then stick the uh, oval tree onto it and now I can just adhere this oval um, die cut that we cut earlier onto that acetate and that will sandwich both of them and give you this clear shaker window um, that looks really beautiful and then you can see how uh, awesome that looks and how beautifully that element shake it almost looks like it's snow collected at the bottom then I've gone ahead and taken this dear family uh, die and I've die cut this a uh, stag using a gray cardstock and I'm going to place that tag stag on the second uh, panel the the bank that we created and I want to make sure that I'm placing it in the right place. So the first panel, you are going to uh, score it backwards. This last panel, you're going to score it forward. And then the middle panel, I told you, on the left side, you will score it forward. And the right side, you will score it backward. And I'm just making sure that I place the stag in the right place. So I'm just adding that stag. I'm just adding a little bit of glue on the foot of the of the the legs of that stag and I'm gluing him onto the bank and then I'm adhering some you want to adhere some strong tape and I'm using score tape and I'm adding that to both the flaps or on the on that bank panel and then I'm just going to peel off that uh, tape and I'm going to take I'm going to align the edge of this uh, bank panel to the crease line of the front panel and you can see that I'm just aligning them together and you can see it's adhered there I'm just going to press it down and you can, that's how it's going to 
B. And then when I remove the, uh, the tape on the second side, that will adhere to the other side of the front panel. And I'm going to add score tape to these two scored flaps for the last panel. And I'm making sure I'm adding quite a bit of score tape to this because this is a strong, you need it to be nice and strong so it doesn't fall out fall off on you if you were to mail this. If you're not going to mail it, still you need to keep it, you want it to be nice and strong so it stays uh, put. Anyway, I'm removing it. Now I'm going to align that with the edge of the, the folded edge of the um, the, the middle panel, the, the, the bank panel, and that'll, that'll very, um, that'll fold in very nicely on the so it'll tuck in very well with your front panel. So now I'm removing all the score tapes and I'm going to bring them all together, adhering them all together. I'm just adhering the middle panel there. Sorry, that closed. But it's very easy. Once you start putting together, you will understand how these things go. And then it'll fold the top flap of the front panel onto the the, the score panel of the, last, of the last panel. And then you can see how you can just push it downwards and it just goes flat and you can fit it into an envelope. You will need a little larger envelope than your usual. You can also add a little bit of a light behind this. Like you can see this, I'm just adding my flashlight um, through it and you can see how beautiful it looks, all that shine and glimmer and that stag in the, uh, in the glowing uh, snowy night. And that pretty much completed this shadow box. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give us a thumbs up, thumbs up and subscribe to our channel and I will see you next time. Bye bye.